Greetings, ISB Miniature Studio, and thank you for joining me on this next part of my Necromunda diorama build. This time I'm tackling walkways, barricades, and stairs. I'm mainly going to be showing you how I paint my stairs, but I applied these same painting techniques to all of the various barricades and gantries that are within my Necromunda diorama build. So without further ado, let's commence. Following the piece being Xenophil primed, I give it an overall base coat of Citadel Dark Reaper, but instead of thinning down actual Citadel Dark Reaper, I use a custom mixture of one part black airbrush paint to one part dark sky from Army Painter to three parts Iron Wolf from Army Painter. This is a very close approximation to Citadel Dark Reaper and it allows me to use my airbrush to undercoat and base coat this piece much quicker. Once this is dry, I take some Citadel Stegadong Scale Green and an Army Painter large dry brush and I overbrush this. So I first dampen the brush, stick some of the paint on there and then work it off using a piece of hardboard I've got lying around because this has a nice rough texture on the back. I'm not looking to take all the paint off like you would with a dry brush, this is an overbrush. So like a stippling and mottling all over the entire piece to add interest and texture. I then give the entire piece a black wash using Vallejo Game Wash. This is a large pot of non-oil equivalent. If you own a pot of this, remember to stir it rather than shaking it because the uh, lubricant that's used in this wash can go very bubbly if you shake the pot. But it's great for large terrain pieces like this. And then once that's dry, I take a large graduate mop brush, which is a cheap art brush that's very soft. You could alternatively use a makeup brush for this, and I give it a dry brush using Citadel Phoenician Grey. This is a traditional dry brush in that I put paint onto the brush and tape off the excess with a piece of dry kitchen paper towel, and then give the whole piece a light dry brush. These three steps are my base for pretty much all of my metal terrain. I like that dark, grim, dark, um, grey metal aesthetic, like primed metal fresh off of a factory, rather than starting from a base of, say, lead belcher or gun metal. Now I take some Army Painter Uniform Grey and a small Army Painter dry brush, again doing this as an overbrush, so a slightly damp brush and taking the excess off on the back of a piece of hardboard. And I start applying this grey to all the areas of the piece that I want to end on a cream colour. Slowly working this up, as I say, this is done as a stippling overbrush, building up lots of texture, but not looking for a perfect paint coverage. We want some of that base grey to, to grin through in areas so that you get the impression that all of this has been haphazardly painted in the underhide. Using a small brush, an old brush that I've cut the bristles off the end, I repeat this same step for any other pieces that I want to be cream, so in this case the circuit breaker boxes, any ductwork and so on. Then all of these pieces are given an all over coat of Army Painter Speed Paint Pallid Foam. I leave this to dry for about 30 minutes. I'm not too worried about the reactivation properties that some of the older speed paint have, though I've never had any problems with that. And then once this is dry, I give all of those same areas an all over wash of Army Painter Strong Tone. You could alternatively use Citadel Aircraft Surf Shake. I leave that wash to dry for about 40. And once dry, I take some Army Painter Skeleton Bone and again a medium dry brush and I give this an overbrushed all of those areas. Again, slow stippling circular motions. I use my smaller cut off brush to get into any awkward areas and again onto those circuit breakers and ducts. And I slowly build this up in that stippling effect. Again, letting some of the base grays and brown areas grin through so that it's not, we're not looking for perfect paint coverage here. We're looking for texture, we're looking, we're looking for atmosphere more than anything. We want some of that grime to, to show through on this piece. It adds a lot more interest to your terrain. While I'm here, I also use skeleton bone just to give the servo skull a base coat. Next up, taking equal parts Army Painter Desert Yellow and Demonic Yellow, I mix these together to form a very dark browny yellow. 
For any British viewers watching, this is English mustard yellow, I like to call it. Um, like with a lot of army paint or yellows though, this paint is quite thin and I do an overbrush stippling on all the areas where I'm going to be adding hazard stripes. So on the walkways, that's things like the edges of walkways or in this case the edge of these stair treads. I do two coats of this and I slowly build this up until I'm happy that the yellow is a strong enough colour for me. As I say, these paints are quite thin, so just take your time until you get the result you're happy with. Then, using some Army Paint and Moon Dust, an old plastic lid, I then take a washing up sponge that I tear into small pieces, dip this into the Moonstone, taking off the excess on a piece of paper towel. I gently sponge this over all of the treads all of the yellow painted areas just to add a bit of chipping and variety to those yellow painted areas. Again, take your time with this, less is more. I then take some masking tape. This is two mil thick. This is available from Green Stuff World, Tamiya or Modelcraft. And I start laying this down to form hazard stripes. I use one of my sculpting tools with a rounded edge to gently press this into all the grooves and work my way around all of the treads. Approximately 10 hours later. This step is complete and I'm ready to take some matte black paint and again using an army painter small dry brush do a stippling motion over all of these treads to form the hazard stripes. I recommend doing this directly downwards onto the tape. You don't want to push any paint underneath that tape or make any of that masking tape come loose. So again, take your time with this and build it up to the colour you want. As always, we're not looking for this to be perfect though. We're trying to make this look haphazardly painted. After leaving this to dry, I repeat the moonstone sponging effect one more time over the top just to add some chipping to the black painted stripes before using my same sculpting tool to remove all of the tape throw that away and I'm left with some very satisfying hazard striping. I then use my modelling scalpel to cut out some decals from the neck from under transfer sheet. I personally just apply these using water, no microset or microsole. Um, just using some clean water to soak it off of the decal and then a clean brush and some water and a damp cocktail stick to move the decal into its final position. And once it's dry, so after about an hour, I give it a single coat of some Army Painter Anti-Shine Matte Varnish to seal it. I then take some Art Store Cheap Acrylic Paints in Burnt Umber and Burnt Sienna and once again, using that same washing up sponge, I start with a sponge chipping of the burnt umber, building this up on all the areas that would take the most weathering, so the middle of walkways, the edge of steps, anywhere where rust might gather due to lots of wear and tear. And then once the burnt umber's dry, I repeat this again with the burnt sienna over those same areas to add a bit of variance to that rust chipping. I then take some Vallejo black red paint and apply this to all of the electrical cables and any of the handles on the pipes that I want to also be painted red. And then I take some army painted gunmetal and apply this to any exposed bolts around the whole of the terrain piece not looking to cover up every single rivet and weld but just pick out anywhere where I can actually see a bare hex nut just to add a bit of visual interest to the piece before using some Vallejo hammered copper on any of the metal signage and copper pipes. I then use Army Painter Dragon Red to edge highlight all of the red painted electrical cables and also those um, shut off handles on all of the pipe work before giving the red painted handles a final chipping effect 
by stippling on some army painter barbarian flesh. For any hanging hose pipes, I just give these a single coat of army painter speed paint Grave Lord Grey. Give the entire piece a spray varnish with satin varnish before taking some oil paints in black and burnt sienna. And I mix these with Sansador odorless thinners. This is a great thinner to use with oil paints as say it's odorless. And I mix this in a cup, slowly adding more Sansador until I'm happy it's a wash consistency. You see there I'm checking it on the side of my pot and even on the paper that I've laid down to protect my workspace. Once I'm happy that this is a wash consistency, using an old brush, I apply this over the entire terrain piece. I leave this to dry for approximately 20 minutes before taking a clean pot, some clean sansador, some makeup sponges and some eyeshadow sponges. And I dip the sponges into the clean sansador, wring out as much of that liquid as possible before doing a gentle, consistent wiping motion across the piece, either up down or left to right, always in the same direction to create the same weathering streaks. I then use some Green Stuff World liquid pigments in medium rust, light rust, orange rust and verdigreen. I start with the medium rust, working my way up through the colour palette. Um, this is after the piece has dried for approximately 24 hours and I work my way around just adding these liquid pigments into any areas where I think rust would naturally gather, so the edges of steps or the corners of steps, around rivets, um, any other areas where water could sit and anywhere else where I've got interest on the piece such as crackle paints that I applied before priming. I then take the verdigreen and put this on the brass areas exclusively, so the brass signage, picking out any raised details where water could sit and cause that verdigreen weathering. And I repeat this on the top of all of the copper piping also. Next up, taking some Sakura fine liners in black and navy. I add various tags and graffiti, score marks over as many of the areas of the piece as I feel fit, just to add to that gangland aesthetic of Necromunda. On this barricade here that I've painted the same as the stairs, I've sketched out some block graffiti in my sketchbook saying dead end. I line this out using my Sakura thicker pens just so that I can neatly define this writing before taking a small brush and some matte black paint and blocking in those letters before using some matte white to fill in the middle of that block graffiti. Not looking for this to be perfect again as it's meant to represent haphazardly done block graffiti. Then using some Liquitex Pyrrole Red Ink I apply this over the whites of any of the servo skull eyes just to add a glowing red eye effect. Every other screen I give a watered down coat of Army Painter Spaceship Exterior before giving a very gentle airbrushing of Liquitex Titanium White over the top to add a ambient glow. And I then go over the top of this with some Citadel Hexray Flame slowly building this up from the bottom of each screen in layers. I want the bottoms of the screens to be darker than the top. So using the airbrush, I'm very carefully building this up in thin layers. And once dry, I then take some Liquitex Titanium White ink on a hard palette with an Army Painter Insane Detail brush, as this has a very small tip and I then squiggle on and dot on some random text onto all of the consoles. And with that, the piece is now complete.
So guys, all that's left to say is many thanks for watching to the end of the video. If you have enjoyed this and you want to see more of my work, you can always find me on social media and share with me your own Net Commander terrain pieces. Or you could even, you could even leave me a like or subscribe on this video because it might make you feel good. It definitely makes me feel good and I'm glad that you've been here with me today. So until next time, all that's left to say is you are a wonderful person who is destined for hobby greatness. Many thanks for watching to the end of the video and I hope to catch you next time. Take care.